Hello, my name is Rick Pearson. Welcome to Prophecy USA, a program specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. You know, Isaiah referred to Mystery Babylon the Great as the Lady of Kingdoms, and the Statue of Liberty is the iconic symbol of America today. But is there a hidden mystery that lies within the history of this Lady of Liberty? Stay tuned because you will be amazed where this lady came from. Welcome back, folks. Karen, it's great to have you on the program today. I'm so happy to be here, and I'm happy to say hi to all of our friends and partners. We want to thank you so much for joining us on our Prophecy Podcast and sending us questions. Also for supporting us with your prayers and your letters, your monthly donations as well. We could not do this ministry without your support. That's right. And, and you know, Karen, I want to encourage you folks out there to send us your questions. In fact, one of the questions that came in, I've just spent a lot of research on, and it's going to be the main teaching for our program today. Karen, you have that question. I do. The question that came in from somebody, they asked, Isaiah referred to Mystery Babylon the Great as a Lady of Kingdoms, Rick. I was always taught that this had something to do with the Catholic fixation on Mary, the Queen of Heaven. But you believe it's the Lady of Kingdoms, and is referring to the Statue of Liberty. Mm -hmm. Could you please give me a detailed understanding that backs your hypothesis? Okay, we certainly can. Um, and I must say, after we researched that question, we were astounded at the history behind Lady Liberty. Remember, when these passages were written, America never existed. They did not even know the earth was round. Hardly anyone, except the very elite, could even read. So Mystery Babylon the Great is a providential city, meaning population center, meaning she was created through divine proclamation, and God watches over his word to perform it. You know, the mystery of this lady goes far beyond the common knowledge of what we've been told. Just listen to this. America's greatest icon, the Statue of Liberty, stands on Ellis Island, overseeing the shipmasters of the earth while they pass by the municipality of Babylon, New York. But how did she get there and what mysteries lie behind her creation? The original concept of creating a female statue came from French artist and sculptor, Frederick Auguste Bartholdi. It was he who in 1855 proposed to the Egyptian government a 90-foot statue to be erected at the entrance of the Suez Canal. His agenda was to create a statue symbolizing the Egyptian peasant woman whose prototype was titled Egypt carrying the light to Asia that would enlighten the travelers of the world upon the entrance to the canal. According to the archives, the Egyptian government at that time was heavy in debt from the construction of the canal and rejected Bartholdi's proposal. However, years later, France decided Bartholdi's proposal to Egypt should be gifted to the United States. The woman would be designed in the form of the Roman goddess, Libertas, and would be built by Alexander Gustave Eiffel, who built the Eiffel Tower in France. However, whether known or unknown by Bartholdi, this goddess had been handed down from generations and came in various forms. To the Greeks, she was Aphrodite, from Egypt, she was Osiris. From the Canaanites, she was Ashtoreth. Later, being termed in Hebrew history as Ishtar, whose origins came from Queen Semiris of Babylon in the 23rd century BC. It was there that King Nimrod and Queen Semiris initiated the religion known as Baal worship. 
Baal worship included the worship of stars, planets, astrology, and fertility. Together with these gods came the fertility goddess known as Ashtoreth. Ashtoreth was worshipped around poles carved in the shape of a woman. Around the pole were temple prostitutes, both male and female, who performed sexual acts in front of the worshippers, or allowed them to take part in the acts as a form of worship. In an unholy dark trinity of idol worship and immorality came the third abomination. It was the god Molech, where children were sacrificed for the benefit of financial blessings. These gods originated in the first of three Babylons that the Bible said would be raised up throughout the generations. The first being Nimrod's Babylon in the 23rd century BC, earmarked by the Tower of Babel. The second being King Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon of 600 BC, where three Hebrew boys were miraculously delivered from a burning fiery furnace because they would not break the first commandment thou shalt have no other gods before me. And the third Babylon that would be raised up in the latter days. This nation would be the most wealthy and most powerful military nation that the world has ever seen. And once again, just as the three Hebrew boys were a remnant of believers that would be raised up and delivered from God's burning fiery judgment that would take place in just one hour. But this Lady of Kingdoms, whose name came from the Roman goddess Libertas, or Lady Liberty, would be shrouded in mystery for generations until it was her appointed time to be revealed to a chosen people. So what exactly are the hidden mysteries of Lady Liberty? What do the spikes on her head mean? And what secret things does the Bible unveil for this iconic Lady of Kingdoms who stands in our midst? Welcome back, folks. As we look at the Statue of Liberty, it's amazing that Bartoli's vision for Egypt carrying the light to Asia was transferred to America as he designed the seven spikes on her head as a symbol illuminating a message of hope to the seven continents and seven seas of the world. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. The waters which thou sawest where the woman sitteth are peoples and multitudes, nations and tongues. And from that symbol, God used America to become the greatest nation in Bible history to spread liberty to mankind through the light of the gospel. For God who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Folks, the light that shines in the darkness must shine out of our hearts if we want this gospel proclaimed. And America has been used to send missionaries all over the world. But something has happened throughout the years. Lady Liberty's light of the gospel has changed colors. She is now the number one promoter of LGBT and transgenderism in the world. The light that once shone in God we trust now shines with a multicolored rainbow declaring in whose moral protocol we defy. Biblical liberty, meaning to be free from sin, has been hijacked by secular humanism, regressing us back to the days of Noah and Sodom and Gomorrah. As the world looks at Lady Liberty, millions of illegal immigrants storm into the nation looking for wealth and prosperity. Her walls have fallen. The global agenda of the UN and the World Economic Forum globalists who hate capitalism and hate God and the American heritage have infiltrated the culture, thrown the light of the gospel out of our schools, our universities, and even government. The founding purpose of America and the vision of God's covenant nation has left only a remnant who stand in the gap, proclaiming life, liberty, and freedom. But there's still hope for anyone who has faith to call out to God. But perhaps this scripture summarizes what other nations are now watching as a remnant of believers within America fight for the spiritual soul of the nation. Sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms, 
for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Folks, although it may seem impossible, the Bible continually shows victory when God's people will humble themselves and pray. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, in the days of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works for 40 years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. In perhaps the most confusing and darkened generation that our world has ever seen since Sodom and Gomorrah, God has a plan for you to enter into his supernatural rest. We live in a very confused society, but that does not mean that confusion has to live in us. Proverbs said, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You know, in studying the 153 examples of signs in the Bible, it's very evident that signs were not only given to show God's people that he was speaking to them, but it also separated the sheep from the goats in determining who was listening. Folks, the signs of the times are here. Lady Liberty is perhaps one of the greatest signs to the world that America is Mystery Babylon the Great. Yet traditional teachers within America refuse to look at the signs. They refuse to warn people of America's coming judgment. It does not matter who becomes the president of the United States. The Bible has already spoken it, and he will do it. God has already purposed it, and he will bring it to pass. What's going to happen to Babylon the Great? Before the new world order comes into power, Babylon must be deposed. So what is our role? What should we be doing as we see this darkness invade our nation? What should we do when we watch our children being brainwashed by the LGBT sodomite mindset? The globalist climate change initiatives, the coming digital currency, and the dystopian government that scripture says will definitely gain global acceptance. For they have one mind and they shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Folks, there's only one thing we should do. So stay tuned. You want to hear this next segment. Theological seminaries have inundated churches preaching that America is not in the Bible. Prophecy teachers have regurgitated for years that America is not in the Bible. But what does the Bible say? Prophecy USA is proud to present a 30-page brochure filled with scripture debunking the biggest lie keeping the body of Christ in darkness today. America is fully detailed in scripture over 53 times, and now we want to put God's word directly into your hands. America's role in Bible prophecy is rapidly being fulfilled and her judgment is coming. For a gift of $15 plus shipping and handling, we will send you this amazing brochure. For a gift of $50, we will send you five brochures. For $100 or more, we will rush to you 10 brochures. And for a ministry gift of $500, we will send you both our books, The Hour That Changes Everything, and The Coming Exodus, plus 20 brochures for your friends, family, and relatives. Call today. Welcome back, folks. We've been talking about the Statue of Liberty and a major sign that she's made in our generation pinpointing who Babylon is within our generation. But Karen, you have a question that leads into our next segment 
of what we can expect. What is that question? This question came from Rodney, and he said, Rick, in all my studies, I don't believe the USA is Mystery Babylon. I get some of the points you guys make, but in Revelations chapter 17 and also in chapter 18, it gives the colors of the Vatican as red and purple. That makes it clear for me. I don't see anything red and purple in the U.S. Also clear that the many waters references the influ that influences the Catholic Church has throughout the world. Also, when God makes references to the harlot, he's talking about a church. And probably the emphasis the church makes in almost making Mary more of a goddess, like calling her the queen of the universe. Mm -hmm. This is pretty much the opposite of the bride of Christ. But thank you for all your digging. I have used some of your material. Well, thank you, Rodney. Uh, thank you for your comments. And folks, one of the most important things we can do in America is start listening to the biblical prophets and refuse to listen to traditional teachers of yesteryear. Turn to scripture and let God speak directly to you. You know, there are differences and similarities as to what Rodney said and how we interpret scripture. But Rome being commercial Babylon, is steeped in traditional dogma and speculation handed down for 200 years. You know, the color red or scarlet in the Old Testament frequently symbolizes blood, whether the blood of sacrifice or the blood of violence. Uh, there's certain scriptures that just talk about that all through the Bible. And the color purple is mentioned 53 times in scripture and so it must obviously play a prominent role in the Bible. For example, the harlot that he was referring to. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup of abominations and the impurities of her sexual immorality. And the city of abominations displayed purple throughout Revelation 18, 12 through 16. So purple doesn't necessarily mean righteousness or royalty, but we know that purple is associated with the rich, as in the story of Lazarus and the rich man, where it mentions that he was clothed in purple and fine linen who feasted sumptuously every day. Now, as compared to Lazarus, who wore rags, even in the antiquities of the Jews, the kings of the world wore purple, including the Assyrians, the warriors clothed in purple, governors and commanders, all of them desirable young men, horsemen riding on horses. The colors in the Catholic priests' robes have symbolic meaning and mark the passage of time. Now, it's my understanding that robes of Catholic priests are mainly purple only when worn at funerals. Most of the time, they are white, green, red, or violet, or black. Now, the colors of the priest's vestments help the faithful to know certain celebrations at hand. So picking one color out of four is not being very objective. So there's major flaws in the interpretation of Rome being commercial Babylon. Number one, commercial Babylon and religious Babylon are two separate entities. Commercial Babylon appears before the new world order appears and is destroyed at the beginning of the tribulation by the beast. She's not destroyed at the end of the tribulation, which is when religious Babylon as well as every knee will bow and pay homage to Christ. The beast, Satan, the false prophets, and all 10 kings will bow to acknowledge the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So the only difference between a believer and the people who laugh at us for being believers is that we are already bending our knees to Jesus. But just wait, so will they someday and you'll be able to say, see, I told you so. Now, Rodney, we most certainly agree with you in that some believers, both Protestants and Catholics, will not be counted worthy to escape the rapture. They will be here throughout the tribulation period, and if they take the digital implant of the mark of the beast, they will automatically become part 
of the one world religion. Now we see this now in the concept of Chrislam and the three temples recently built in the UAE to merge Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. The mixture of Abrahamic faiths could very easily represent the Babylonian religion during the tribulation. However, Rome does not meet one qualification for commercial Babylon, and she's located 70 miles inland of the Mediterranean coastland. For example, she has no ports. She does not trade with the merchants of the earth, nor are they made rich through the abundance of the Catholic Church. Babylon the Great, or America as we know her, sits on the wealth and power of the world before the New World Order comes into power. Her national symbol is the Statue of Liberty, originating from the Roman goddess Liberatus, which originated from ancient Babylonian religions of Baal worship. This is the woman who sits or rules over the seven mountains of the earth. The merchants of the earth and the sea captains will watch from their ships while she is destroyed. The time sequences, the biblical descriptions, and the facts we give you are undeniable. The fact that the vision waits for its appointed time to be revealed tells us that we're in the last days and Jesus is coming soon. Jesus summed up the Ten Commandments in one verse, the Golden Rule to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Paul summed it up by saying, be kind one to another and tender hearted. While God tells us to be kind one to another and be tender hearted, Jeremiah warns us that man's heart is deceitful and desperately wicked, but God searches our hearts to see if we're walking in his commandments. God knows the heart of man, but the question for us today is, do we know the heart of God, especially in this nation that we call the United States of America? The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, you shall consider it or understand it perfectly. God's heart revealed in the latter days, and according to scripture, there is a remnant of believers who will understand it perfectly, but only if you're following the desires of his heart and not your own heart. You know, there are many people today that are attempting to stand in the office of a prophet and speak his word, but they're speaking from their heart. But if their words do not come to pass, this is the thing the Lord has not spoken, but the prophet has spoken it presumptuously from his own heart, not God's. And with regards to Latter-day Babylon, according to scripture, many prophetic voices have been seduced by the same goddess of Liberatus who has deceived the whole nation. And that perverted form of anything goes type of liberty has caused God's people through false prophets to forget his name for Baal. Jeremiah warns the prophets of the latter days and asks this question, what is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I'm against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. You know, I find it interesting to watch mainstream media pick up talking points and regurgitate those words from one network to another, especially when those words have no credibility whatsoever. During the Trump administration, it was Russia, Russia, Russia. Then it was quid quo pro and collusion. Then it was the January 6th insurrection. It just never ends. However, if you listen to many of the self-proclaimed internet prophets, you will hear the same tactics of stealing words from one another being said over and over. Speaking of the end time transfer of wealth, we're going to take over Hollywood, the education system, and then lead the world into a great end time revival. Well, folks, that has just not happened over the last three years. In fact, the very opposite has happened. Moses warned us of the signs to look for when a nation comes under judgment. The walls of the nation will fall. Millions of aliens have invaded America. 
She is the greatest debtor nation in the world. Meanwhile, the World Economic Forum and United Nations and woke agenda has infiltrated every academic, every technology company, and America's banking system in the nation as well as globally. This is a global phenomenon. And this has been blatantly revealed in the last three years, even while the prophets state otherwise. And Jeremiah has warned us, I'm against them that prophesy false dreams, said the Lord, and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies, by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, says the Lord. You know, there's a kingdom now theology that preaches that God will not judge the covenant nation of America. They refuse to read God's written word and boldly proclaim that America is nowhere to be found in the Bible. But Jeremiah continues his warnings to us in the latter days. For every man's word shall be his burden. For ye've perverted the words of the living God, of the Lord of hosts. Therefore, I will utterly forget you. I will forsake you and that city that I gave you and your fathers and cast you out of my presence. I will bring an everlasting reproach upon you. You know, the chapter talking about the latter days in this book of Jeremiah 23, Jeremiah warns the false prophets in the nation, I will utterly forget you and the city that I gave you and your fathers and cast you out of my presence. But what city is he talking about in the latter days? City is polis. It means population center. And according to the Bible dictionary, city was determined by a population center that had walls around it to protect its population. We don't have cities with walls today, but we have population centers with a defense, with an air defense identification zone to protect the inhabitants therein. Now look at this when it talks about the city of Babylon the Great. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Folks, this is not doom and gloom. This is hard-line Bible prophecy spoken directly from the heart of God through Jeremiah. He will judge the wicked, but he will reward the righteous. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and the bride must make herself ready. The rapture's at our doorstep, and the door will soon be opened. Follow his word, keep your heart clean, and do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And we'll see you at the rapture. But Karen, we are totally out of time right now. And this is Rick and Karen Pearson from Prophecy USA reminding you that Jesus is alive, God is in total control, and he's coming back very soon. See you next week on Prophecy USA. Shalom.